Hello, my name is Richard Kent. I want to talk to you today about the first law of thermodynamics. This is the basic of all physics. And basically, the first law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Um, when I say energy cannot be created or destroyed, that includes potential energy, and I'll describe that um, or illustrate that by using the sun as an illustration. Now, the sun is the source of all the energy in our solar system. In the sun, something extraordinary happens, totally supernatural, we can't do it, it's called nuclear fusion, and every second, 600 million tons of hydrogen are converted into helium, except for four tons. And those are converted into heat, light, and energy, and are really, really important because the heat and the light is really important for planet Earth, even 93 million miles away, because we need the heat and the plants need the light for photosynthesis. So you can accept that the sun is really important. But the sun also has a great deal of potential energy in terms of hydrogen, which has not yet been converted into helium. It's a bit like a piece of coal. If you look at a piece of coal, you're looking at a piece of, if you look at a piece of coal, you're looking at potential energy. It's not been put on your fire or in your furnace yet. It has potential energy. So that if you put that piece of fire into a furnace or, or into a fire, then energy would be released. So we come back to the original statement is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. And now we look at evolution. What do they teach us? Well, the evolutionists teach us that 13.8 billion years ago, there was a singularity that was so small you can't see it, but of infinite weight, and it exploded by chance and caused the whole universe to be created. That actually is directly opposed to the first law of thermodynamics. The Bible is quite clear. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then God said, let there be light. God spoke and the matter was converted into energy and light. Now we know from uh, Einstein's law of relativity, E equals mc squared, energy equals mass times the square of the speed of light. So there is a relationship between mass, energy, light, and time. So when God said, let there be light, that was the beginning of time. Time is the fourth dimension, and there are 11 dimensions that we know about, and there probably are many more. So the Bible um, is very clear that um, all and in all mass, all energy, all light, and all time, the source of all of those comes from Jesus Christ himself. However, the evolution has a God of chance. And this God of chance is a very convenient God of chance because this God of chance can disobey the most important law of physics, which is the first law of thermodynamics, which says that energy and potential energy cannot be created or destroyed. So the evolutionists will come and lie to you and say that the singularity, which is so small, it cannot be seen, that's very convenient for you, for them, um, uh, of infinite mass exploded on its own and created the universe. So two points there. First of all, um, the evolutionists teach us that the potential energy of the singularity created itself, and secondly, that it exploded, which requires energy, and they don't explain where the energy came from. So, do I believe in evolution? It's absolute rubbish. Is it a lie? Absolutely. It's complete and utter, an utter lie. There is absolutely nothing in common between the Bible and evolution. I think it should be called evolution. Um, is totally evil and opposed to the scriptures. No, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Thanks for listening and God bless you.